fix on Dash Radio. Get the show. Right now, I have with me a woman who beats all the odds. I have Ebo. How yeah, you doing? Yo, what's good? Nothing Thanks much. Thanks for having me. No problem, no problem, man. <coughs> you is what don't you do? You're a TV producer, you do live video production, branding, development, talent consulting. You're crazy behind the camera. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. up? Um, you know, I do a little bit of everything, man. You know, um, I guess you can call me one of those industry babies. You know, who kind of had the the best of both worlds growing up as a kid. So um, I just kind of was good for this. I, I love it and I like to explore different options and I like to create different good vibes for the community and just to be able to have content, you know, all kind of knowledgeable content, good content, funny content, whatever it is. It's entertaining. Does it work? That's Evo. So the show that you currently have on Netflix, you want to tell the listeners about that? Yeah, 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 man. Um, I was given an opportunity to produce on this show called Dropping Cash. Um, it's called Dropping Cash LA. Um, it's with Complex. Um, season one of the show, that's what's on Netflix right now. It was actually with Go 90, Verizon Wireless Go 90 okay. and Complex, and then Go 90 no longer exists now. So now it's on Netflix, which is awesome because a lot more eyes could, you know, be able to watch the show now. Um, but Dropping Cash is really great, man. Um, it's like a mix between MTV Cribs mm-hmm. and Most Expensive and Shit 2 Chain. Yeah. Um, so it's an 11 minute digital show. It's pretty much we hang out with a celebrity and they go and splurge on expensive shit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like we start off in their own element. It can kind of be their crib, their home, the studio, wherever it is. We're going to be the full, to- um, full tour of it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's like the, the, the talent is hosting the camera. So yeah. it's like you're hanging out with them for the day. Yeah. And they're talking directly to you, like, oh, yo, did you see that? And it's directly to camera. What I like about it is everybody that's on the show is relevant. Yeah. It's not like somebody that was once hot, and then you like, where the fuck they at? Yeah. And you're in the liquor store, and they only buying a piece of candy. <laughs> like, that's all the nigga could yeah, afford. You money. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's actually people, like, making big purchases. So I definitely like that. You got to get my boy Stevie on there, man. Okay. Yeah, man, you know, Will's be watching, too. Okay, hey, let me, let me find <laughs> out. I seen the joint, he had Iggy on there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was dope. I seen it the other night, actually. Yeah, yeah, that actually was a really cool episode. That one is paired with B.O.B. Um, I produced the B.O.B. segment portion of it. Um, and it's really dope, man. B.O.B., that's the home team. I'm from Atlanta. Like, oh, all the Atlanta yeah. people that's on the show just know. Yeah. Evo, love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so he bought the guitar, right? Was yeah, it the guitar? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, um, and a lot of people didn't really know how he really got into playing guitar or why even rappers have a guitar or why, yeah. how did that even connect. Mm-hmm. Um, but for him to be able to kind of explain that and have that kind of intimate moment where mm-hmm. it's not all over the place it's just him and the camera and us kind of you know being there um but it was really great to hear his story like he's funny he's super funny i love bob he needs his own show for real <laughs> <laughs> so what do you feel is the the best guest that you've had on the show so far which if you had to pick one so far the one was like your ultimate favorite Man, well, we just wrapped season two, like, okay. in October, so that's yeah. not even out yet. Oh, shit. I, I wish I could talk on that, you know, <laughs> and tell you guys who's coming up on that, but yeah. it's some litty people coming up on okay. that. Okay, that's a good um, show. It, it, it really is. Actually, I'm going to tell you one person from next season. Okay. And, all right, I'm from, I'm from the 80s, okay? Mm-hmm. So, as a kid, I was sick over, like, B2K, Bow Wow, all of them, right? Mm -hmm. I was the one kid that had Bow Wow on my fucking ceiling (laughs) when I get on punishment. (laughs) Like, that was the one thing that came down. Damn. So. (laughs) You got Bow Wow on the show? Man. (laughs) We got Bow Wow on the show. Okay. Hey, That's a Bow Wow challenge? Or no. Bow wow? no, 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 no Bow Wow challenge. No, the purchases, the purchases, the purchases he ain't are real. Back. The purchases oh, okay. are real. That's the one okay. thing. That's what the show is. We had that nigga on the show first. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then go back to the show, uh, the, the store on the next episode to confirm he didn't take shit back. Yeah. yeah. No. Wow, you're playing. Y'all are playing him. Y'all are. Nah, Bow Wow cool. No, but question. So is it, is it, Whatever they drop cash on, because I saw that she was doing artwork, you know, and her jewelry, like Iggy Azalea, and I thought that was really dope that she was pointing out artwork. You know, you don't really see celebrities with artwork and them talking about it. <laughs> the whole art scene's kind of 
on the low, you know, but I thought that was really dope that was brought to light. So is it dropping cash on cars too or dropping cash on no, whatever? No, um, each episode is different. So each episode, um, the talent, they decide what they want to buy okay. um, because at the end of the day, they have to take this item home. It's yeah. like you can't fake buy this because people want to see you with it. The fans want to see the same yeah. thing that you just bought on TV mm. on your Instagram feed. And if it's not on your Instagram feed, that means it's fake. Yeah. So, it's we all, we talk with the talent, for real. We have calls with these people and like, yo, you about to spend your money, so what do you want to buy? And we can go find it. Now, do most people make the purchases with cash or you see people actually using credit cards too? I mean, it's either or. Whichever we ask them, you know, how you want to ball out on TV? You want to use a card? I don't want to know anybody a... card, then go. And you know, and some of and some of the other ones, you know, are realistic, like obviously like you can't drop cash on this with cash because it has to be done this way. Yeah. I mean, it is really shot the mm-hmm. way you would buy something in the store. You yeah, know I like I mean? how I like how it's like a day in the life type thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just a like somebody chaperoning them as they buy something and yeah. then the, the the actual item comes up with the cost. It actually shows like them leaving the house and all that. That's pretty dope. It really is a whole day in the life. Like even though that's eleven minutes, that's eleven minutes of TV mm-hmm. that you guys are watching. I'm gonna say this one more time. It's eleven minutes of television that you guys are watching. Yeah. And on Netflix, what is thirty minutes because they pair two episodes together. Yeah. So you watching thirty minutes of a twelve hour day for us. Damn. No, but see that's dope because that's people cool. have that's a short attention span. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all like, we need. That's a lot they're of work. not that's a lot they're of not stuff. just like, oh, let's do this real quick for the camera and then we spend a whole eight hours plus with these people all day. Yeah. And they're not with anybody else. They gotta dedicate their whole day just to us. Man. They ball them. They need to show people how they live. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I wanna see I mean, somebody that I wanna see spend money like Migos. It's some good people coming up, man. Yeah. It's, it's some, she, she's like, they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Yeah, Yo, it's some good people Gucci season man. two, man. Cause season yeah. two is pretty lit. Um, it's real good. That's dope. Really good. That's what's up. So, so how is it being a woman and being in this industry and having, you know, the male dominance, you know, always breathing down your throat? You know, oh, you know, shit. Uh, yeah, no. We got to talk about girl <laughs> power in here. Yeah, woman wouldn't be right. It, it wouldn't be right. Um, yeah, I mean, sure. working in the industry is like working in any industry, to be honest. I mean, and of course, music and television is the toughest because there's so many people with creative ideas and mm-hmm. they're the ones that's on top because they made this idea when really it's like their idea plus your cl- collaborations plus more people and they made the idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, I've definitely been in situations where it's the male that's the dominant and it's like whatever this person says go and yeah. there hasn't always been great, you know, outcomes, but I'm a go-getter. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Sometimes you got to put on your poker face and keep moving mm-hmm. because if you don't and you let that one male ruin your opportunity for your career, you need to guess again on what you want to do and yeah. if this is even Amen. a feel for you. Hey, why got to be a male though? Females do it too. I mean, and, and that's, yeah, that's, that's but crazy. it's not as likely. It's not. Gee, right, well, right, females right, do it too, but no, it's but in a I'm different saying, light. It's not as likely <laughs> for women to be in power and running stuff in general. Like, it's not. It is. We always got to be the second to the, we, the yeah, guy. It's, I mean, it's but, a, but y'all, when they be in there though, y'all, they be power tripping too though. Yeah, we be there. We be there because we got to let you know that we're here. Like, that would be fair though. We get all yeah. of the, we get the shit into the. I stick. mean, do you want a boss that's like too easy going and you feel like you can run over this person? Like, not saying that every boss got to be like some boss bitch or some boss like terrible person, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, they still have to have like some kind of little sternness. No, I'm just saying, like, it's it's to let the it's over. expected for the male to do some old fuck shit, Man. but then the women they do fuck shit too on the low. Everybody do fuck shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, everybody do fuck shit. So let's not just bash the men. Let's just bash all the bad people. Yeah. In the industry. <laughs> well, you they know, just bad men in the industry. I'm in the industry. I know what time it is. Yeah. There's some bad women in the industry. Don't get it twisted. Well, we got it a, is. we got, I don't know if they told you, we got an app for the show called The Fix App. And okay. every now and then we have listeners type in things about the guests. Yeah. And today we had a celebrity guest type something in. They want to come on your show on Netflix. Oh. It was R. Kelly. Yes. Uh, I mean, what are we room. doing? We dropping cash on the sale. <laughs> you know, I think I buy the new lawyer. Shout out to my homegirl. Shout out to my homegirl, Tamara Simmons, executive producer of Survivor Kelly. Though. Oh damn. Oh shit. Hey. So you ain't gonna have to come on the show. I, <laughs> damn. Listen, man. That's a tough situation. 
It's a sensitive subject. I don't even think he's going to be able to drop coins because <laughs> he's going to be dropping soap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, that's a whole nother situation, man. That's yeah. that's how you feel about that though. Man, to be honest, man, I know the Kellys. And like his wife and him and everything, or the brothers, all that? The fam. Okay. The crew. You know what I mean? I've been mm. to the house that's out there, but like never knowing that any of that stuff was ever going on. You so know? is the house that big to where you could overlook those rooms? With I, all this stuff going, I mean, you could go, you could, you could be going in there for the business. You know what I mean? You could be going in there for business. Mm -hmm. That don't mean you're gonna see these the survivors. You yeah. you don't just see them around because obviously they're locked I mean, up, whoever they oh. were at the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, you like wouldn't you wouldn't know that like yeah. especially if you that you're not an everyday person that's there. Mm -hmm. So did you get a vibe or any stories that you heard prior to the ones that are, were already out there, the Leah stuff? You know the, the 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 tape that we've all seen that he claims is his brother, but we know it's not his brother. Man. You, well, you know you you doing the wiggling, you know something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta say something. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say I'm glad that they spoke out. Mm. I'm glad that you know that they did the show. The show is like very well produced. I mean, I know a lot of people got a lot of a lot of things to say about the people on the show. Mm -hmm. You know their credit. A credibility and what mm -hmm. they're saying but for me on the production side it's very well shot it's very well put together it looks nice you they know what really i mean they really look like the average lifetime docu-series yeah. they put more money, yeah, they put more money they into put that more than money. the houston story <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah hell yeah that shit was planned yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome. story was whack too yeah the dude that played dame our kelly story was like whack dame. too though i ain't hold you robert <laughs> kelly was all right you thought it was all right it wasn't the best because the best one, one, the best one is the OJ when they came on the uh, Thirty for Thirty. That's the best one. They should have did good. something like from that from a docu series. Yeah, well, but I mean, the R. Dude, Kelly one got to the point. The it point got to the point, but it's still one sided it, though. It's one sided, yo. So if you gonna put he, a piece out, yeah. if you gonna put a piece out. Yeah. Don't put out a one sided piece. Yeah, let him say his. Well, he was trying to say his. I mean, you act like you act like you act like they said it. They not they not gonna let him say it now because they already they already shut it down. You act like they didn't ask R. Kelly, yo, we about to do this shit about you. Like you want to speak up and tell your side. Well, I mean, I'm not R. Kelly, but I know that at the end of the day, those questions are asked, even though you don't see it. It's like, hey, you want a piece of this cake? Cause it's about to get cut. Now, like, do, you, do you feel it? <laughs> he, he ain't gonna be like, he he's not gonna run to the be like, oh yeah, when it's a, a, a bashing piece on him. Obviously, but, but nobody here been bashed like that, so nobody can really say. What you, the thing that the thing that trips me out too is like some of the other R and B artists in the past, they have done acts just like R Kelly. Now we may not know if it's to the extreme like he did, but like for instance, Marvin Gaye, Nona Gaye's mom, he got with her and she was sixteen. He was taking her on tour, you know, giving her drugs, having sex with her. She was underage and all that. You know, there's no I mean, like, Elvis did marry. Yeah. I so, mean, and I mean, not to say like uh -huh. we can throw out these names and me? just say everybody uh, yeah, else everybody did it all knows, day. But you know what I mean? Piece. It's a bashing piece. And this is a one sided bashing piece. That's the only thing I felt about the project. It was one sided. But honestly, I don't feel like I really need to hear your side if you're doing monstrous stuff like that. Like, I mean, Yes, your side does matter. I'm not going to act like it does not matter and people should not hear it. But when you have more than 50 people come out talking about it, what their your side, does it really even, I mean, yeah, you can say it, but I'm probably not even going to really care. Everybody's entitled to a fair fucking, uh, it's fair. Yeah, it's even though, fair. Even though he did something wrong. It's, it's fair. Even though he did something wrong and everybody don't approve of it. But it's still If he went to ass. jail, he's not going to go to jail without defending himself. Yeah. Where is his defendant side? It's, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna come. Really care. It ain't gonna come when y'all want it. You yeah, know, nobody, nobody gonna want it now. It's, but because yeah. the piece it, is so big about they gonna want it regardless. Them. They gonna want to hear it. They gonna want it. They gonna want it regardless. They gonna want to hear side of the it's story. It's just like right? everybody keep asking Rihanna where her damn album at. You know, she keeps saying it's gonna come <laughs> when I give it to you. When I feel like it, I'm gonna yeah. let you ride this this Fenty Beauty, and he gonna be like, I'm gonna let y'all ride this Surviving Kelly. And then when shit really hit the fan and I mean, ain't got no money. other choice, yeah. when it's down to I don't have no other choice, yeah. then you don't have no choice but to cave in. Mm -hmm. But he ain't going to have no other choice. So we going to hear you think, something, you just think, not when we want to hear it. You think the blowback will be him possibly getting locked up finally? Like how Bill Cosby, he eventually got locked up. I mean, his stuff was real old. But, you know, because this shit happened, what, the 70s, Bill Cosby? 
and then he was able to they was able to get the justice that they wanted. You know, R. Kelly's already been tried. He didn't get have to go to jail, but now everything's brought back up. You think that he's gonna go to jail this time? I mean, I watch a lot of Law and Order and shit. You know, I ain't no detective, but <laughs> no cop or nothing. You know, I don't know the legal system yeah. that well. <laughs> but I mean, it's a possibility. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I mean, the documentary holds a great piece of evidence that they wouldn't have been able to get on their own for the case because at mm-hmm. that time, obviously, they were probably even, you know, being paid off. Mm-hmm. Um, but it it brings up a good point, but it's going to be hard still because, again, it's one-sided, and then you do have people on the show that, you know, is disguised, that one person that's a former employee that's disguised. I mean, it's a credible source, but it's also kind of like... Shaky because you can't... And but I've done same, shows like that. Time, I've, but at the same time... We don't know if these people got agendas, too. Mm-hmm. Not say, not trying to say, like, that R. Kelly didn't do this stuff, but we don't know if the people that were interviewed do not have agendas. Like he said, it's too sad. Everybody got you're agendas, right. bro. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, this, look, I walked, I walked home but I, I I, after the, the show. Hey, Jay, after the show, <laughs> yeah. I went home, and my and my daughter was watching it that night. Oh, shit. So I started watching it with her because yeah. we talked about it that day. Yeah. And I was, like, looking at, like, you know. A lot of irresponsibility going on as parents, yo. Yeah. You Definitely. know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. the dude himself it. said, I took my daughter. He said, R. Kelly pointed my daughter out, and we and I took her on stage. Mm-hmm. The next day, you know, R. Kelly's, uh, my daughter's calling me from R. Kelly's hotel room. Oh, right? yeah. Right, I we saw it. And then they went to the hotel. And I looked at my daughter. I said, yo, we went to a Trippy Red concert, and that nigga pulled you out, out the crowd and said, come on stage. I would look at you like you fucking crazy yeah. to go on stage with this nigga. Yeah. Or... If you already know what R. Kelly is capable of, why would you take your daughter up there? Yeah, and see, like you said, people have different agendas. Some some moms well, are working just, two jobs and I just don't I just have time see, to take I don't care. see as a father how I could, how you could be comfortable knowing your daughter's in this place mm-hmm. and you banging on the door doing wellness checks. I'm not doing that, bro. You I'm put your daughter in, you brought your daughter in there in the first out. place. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. saying. Like, you, you didn't even nip you know, it in the butt in the yeah, first place. But if you know she's in there. I'm not knocking on no she door. She shouldn't yeah. be in there. Yeah, but I'm saying for those dudes. I would, I would. But the thing is, after 18, she yeah. didn't come home. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. That might be the jail. That, that might be the day I go to jail for a reason. You really? know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm standing outside this 18, door, though. I'm going to bring some bricks. I'm going to bring, like, the homies. We all might go to jail for my child because, you the know, that's mine. The whole family about to go down, and we're going to get vandalized. Like, go we're going to break all kind of laws but, trying to break uh, in. Uh, I think another thing that you got to shine light on is, did the dad look at it as an opportunity exactly. for the family to come up yep. having a daughter that that's actually yeah, could yeah. become a star and yep. was like, well, I'm just going to ignore all of the accusations yep. that we already have heard, mm-hmm. and I'm going to let her him try to work with her because yep. it seemed like the game he was using was I'm, I'm gonna make you a star. Mm-hmm. Let, let me have your kid. That's all of the games. Yeah, yeah. That I was told his my game. daughter that too. If you yeah. go to a concert and the nigga wants you to come on stage and he wants you to come backstage, yeah. that's the trap. Yeah. But if you ain't getting that information from your parents, especially mm-hmm. your father, then yo, he's setting you up for failure from the rip. Yo. That's how I look at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Look, I know this is touching home for you a little bit, but I want to get back to you and I know you have a show. <laughs> That um, it's called Rules to the Shit on BET. Can you tell us about that? Yes, that's another um, complex BET project. We actually um, did that as well. And it's actually great. I actually just went to the Dolph concert last okay. night. Shout out to the home Lit. team, Street yep. Execs, them the homies. Mm-hmm. Um, I, man, they've been supporting me since I was in college. <coughs> you know that's what I mean? Dope. Those are the true homies. That's dope. Um, but I had hit them up to let them know, like, yo, the show dropped, blah, blah, blah. I didn't even know they had a, a show in town last night. Mm-hmm. So I went out there to support those guys. But um, Roots of the Shit is real dope. It's like a one-on-one master class course to the rap game. It's mm-hmm. Roots of the Shit. It really is Rules to the Rap Game. It's yeah. Rules to the Tour Life. It's Rules to these contracts. Like, how to break a record, how to mm-hmm. break a record in a strip club, radio. It's always Roots of the Shit. And that's what the story and that's what the show kind of conveys. You have your OGs, like your Common, your Too Short, all the way down to your AO and TO mm-hmm. to get a like wide range of how they fucked up, where they messed up, how you can't. And they're providing you this free course yeah. to the to the, to the the rap game. I like the, uh, the, AO and the episode you had with Nipsey. Huh? The AO and TO get fucked? I mean, they talked about, you know, I mean, being Fett? young and, mm-hmm. you know, being able to blow a bag real fast. Ain't that, that's they, what they sound like, Jazzy Fay? Um... Why are they now? Is that his beat? That's his artist, though, right? You know, I don't quote me on that now. 
I ain't I say so. I was an A and R yet. <laughs> <laughs> she, said, she key word was yeah. No, because I'm from, yeah. I'm from, I'm from Atlanta too. Though. I do do projects. Now. From, 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 <laughs> we both from Atlanta too, though. Oh, so we we know all of that. We know all of them. Yeah. Breezy I, street execs. I, I know Breezy. Store. I put Breezy in my yeah. first reality show I filmed on my own. I had, I had and her and Asia. Um, I had a That's store right. on in um, Castleberry Hill. For real? I yep. went to Clark Atlanta. Street. Yeah, right around the corner. Yep. Two five five, nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what was your first reality project? Um, my first reality project, reality, actually, my first reality project I worked on was <coughs> Jersey Licious. It was on Style Network. It was, it was, um, those Jersey yeah, girls that was kind of big hair, kind of really super tan. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a hair and makeup show. Um, I'm actually still great friends with those people on the cast. So shout out to you guys. Um, it was a cool show. You know, it was actually in New York, New Jersey. I got out of college and went straight to New York, got my first TV job in New York. And I stayed there for like two years working mm-hmm. in, um, talk and uh reality and then i went back down to atlanta and i worked on ti and tiny show okay um bt frankie and Neffy. i got nominated for an emmy working on paternity court that's a dna court show like who's not your father type of thing mm. um and then i came out here to la to do some more stuff and I so went you back did everything back. but a radio show then right <laughs> right boom <laughs> <laughs> but you right. ain't none right right <laughs> So when this journey began, um, mentally, was there a lot of pressure when it first started to compare to how it is now? Or it's the same? You still have that go-getter spirit that you always, well, I'm sure you have. Like, I see it. I but. mean, to be honest, like, I don't like when someone can tell me no. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you just told me no. Let me show you I can do this shit. <laughs> like, that's what I like to do. Um, but honestly, I've been in television production since I was 12. I ain't going to tell you my age. I look real young, but I'm not, y'all. I feel like, don't crack. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I had my own TV show I, when I was 12 on a public access channel. Like, I was into the arts when I was in middle school. Went to a private, like, kind of high school that had a magnet program for television and science. And I kind of knew what I wanted to do yeah. a long time ago. I wasn't fucking around with the fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, I mean, it was still definitely tough, you know what I mean? Being able to, like, still be knowledgeable of the craft and what it takes to do at an early age and still going into the field where it's like, you're mentors. You're now knowing more than your mentors, you yeah. know what I mean? And it's still great, you know what I mean? Because we still learn from each other and we still help out each other and still make it great. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Hey, so go ahead and tell us what your social media is. Anything else you have coming up that we should know about? Um... It's so much coming up, man. If we do another interview in probably like two weeks, I can tell you about this deal I just closed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, it's it's going to be great. Like my social media is Dope Camera Girl. Dope Camera Girl is not just a social media handle. It is a legit production company. I can write you a check that say Dope Camera Girl on okay? Um, uh, that's what's up but yeah 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 man I got a a new project that's coming up that's gonna be actually under my company that's gonna be really great it's gonna be somewhere that you already look every day Um, but yeah uh, actually I'm a photographer too so don't get that twisted I do a lot a lot of creative stuff with the stars the the makeup artists anything that's creative Um, actually have a spread that's in Sheen Magazine Rotimi is on the cover of the magazine so it's really dope um, check him out season two, so it was really cool to work together. Um, but we're also in the same magazine, and it's a really dope spread. It's called More Than Color. Um, it's uh, a dope artist out of Atlanta. Um, her name is Melissa. Okay. Um, and it's body painted art. We went to the desert at like 6 a.m. in the morning to shoot a naked guy in the desert, and it's very super artistic. Um, so check that out on Wishing Magazine. Um, it's a lot more coming up, man. I cannot wait. 2019 is is happening, man. It's raining outside, so I'm letting crazy. you know right now. When it rains, it pours, and there's so much coming right now. <laughs> I love it. That's what's up. So what we're going to do is take a quick break. Listen to The Fix on Dash Talk. Yeah.